Good evening, Illinois. Welcome to Muslims Collaborify with the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition. My name is Rima Kamran. I am the Executive Director, and I'm so excited to have you on t tonight with us at Can TV 21. We are streamlining on. We are streaming online at Can TV backslash Hotline. In the next 25 minutes, join us as we talk to our esteemed guests talking about building power through service. Tonight I'm excited to be joined by Jihad Shoshara and Munib Ansari. How are you guys doing this evening? Doing Good. Well. Okay, wonderful. Today's episode is a special one. Today we're going to be talking about giving thanks. What are you thankful for? Watch and call in at 312-738-1060. We're going to be talking about building power through service. Jihad, you serve as the president of the Pediatric Health Associates. You're a board president at the Muhammad Webb Foundation. You're a loving father and a husband. Uh, you just sent off your your oldest to college, right? And which is really exciting. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to community work, community service. Well, I'm a pediatrician by training. You just said I'm born and raised in Chicago, and. Um, you know, I have, uh, on the west side specifically, I went to Chicago Public Schools, and uh, I kind of remember what that is all like. And so I've always wanted to give back to the community um, in some fashion through medicine or through other things. And um, specifically, I got involved with the turkey drive that I organized here about 14 years ago. So. Okay. Uh, Munib, you graduated uh, recently from the University of Illinois at Sh Urbana-Champaign. You're in your gap year before you head off to medical school. Yes. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, and you're currently working with ICNA Relief, uh, with the ICNA Relief Mobile, Mobile Clinic, and you volunteer, uh, have volunteered for many years with them. Yeah. Uh, what brings you to this work? What brings you to service, community service? I just, you know, I can't really pinpoint what it's been. I think it's just something you always feel like you want to give back and an opportunity comes you take it it leads to another opportunity and then one thing leads to another then you're leading an organization then you're making the decisions and then you're actually working for a nonprofit so it's a culmination of all the years of service and the people that have put time into it okay wonderful so tonight we're going to be talking about the muslim turkey drive um jihad you have uh, the muslim turkey drive has provided thanksgiving dinner for needy families for at least 15 years um, under your leadership last year and this year, the goal is to pro distribute over 5,000 turkeys. Um, what, what is it about this project that appeals to you? Why, why is this an important cornerstone of community building or building power through, through service in our communities? Sure. So, you know, the thing about the turkey drive is it's, it's a gesture of goodwill, but it's specifically it's from the Chicago Muslim community to the families at Chicago Public Schools. Mm -hmm. The schools that we serve is about eight schools that we are donating turkeys to this year. Um, the low income rates of these schools are all 85% or higher. So for the most part, um, and it's hard to believe, but a lot of the teachers and staff will tell you that families at these schools if we did not have a turkey, they may not go out and buy one. It's just a, it's a, it's a big expenditure for them to do that. Um, now, it, it started off as just a goodwill gesture, but over time, the schools themselves learned how to harness this. Um, they have tied the turkey drive to improving attendance uh, either at for students to come to school or uh, for uh, attendance for parents to come to parent-teacher conferences or for report card pickup. Now, it's not like if you don't do, you know, what the school tells you, you won't get a turkey. They just make it easier. Mm -hmm. If you do, like, if you do have perfect attendance for two weeks, or if you do have, you, you do come to parent-teacher conferences, they make it very easy for you to get that turkey as opposed to maybe having to wait to the end of the line. Just that little difference really improves the attendance for these kind of events for the schools. So it's that thing in particular that um, drives this because people see it's actually filling a need. Mm -hmm. The schools actually use this in a way that helps bind the families uh, and the students to the schools, drawing them you know, closer to the schools and hopefully improving their educational opportunities. 
That's wonderful. So uh, I think we are seeing up here on the screen, this is uh, one of the, the turkey drives, and you have um, your volunteers mm -hmm. as well as folks getting ready to distribute mm -hmm. the turkeys. Um, can you share with us w a, a story of impact? Uh, you know, what is the impact that you've seen with this work? Is anything come to mind when we talk about the Muslim turkey drive? And yeah. what, is, what is a moment that you saw the power that just service could uh, could bring to a community as well as building communities mm -hmm. as a whole. So the Turkey Drive actually started very small. It was one school, Emmett Till uh, Math and Science Academy, uh, uh, just outside of Hyde Park, University of Chicago. And for many years that was, you know, the found we just served that one school. Now, alhamdulillah, we were able to expand that to down to eight schools. Um, and one of the staff members who had been there from the very beginning, um, she just passed away. She was uh, in her 60s or 70s. Um, but every year she was the parent liaison and she would come and help organize the parents, you know, make sure everything went well with their distribution, okay? And even though she wasn't a teacher, the parents, she, you know, she was quiet but firm and she mm -hmm. held the line. And after, I want to say the 10th year that I'd done this, um, you know, it was the end of the drive and we were both like just trying to relax after you know, all these turkeys that come through. And she just turned to me and said, you know, um, this is something really special. You're the only people that come back every year. Wow. And I, I was speechless. I was like, I almost, I was like, what do you mean? She said, you know what, not, you're the only people that come back every year. Like, you know, the university next door, they don't come back every year. Even the churches can't afford to do it because mm -hmm. their congregations are shrinking and they're getting older and have money. You're the only people that come back every year. And when she said that, I was like, oh my God, this woman just tell me this is Nimanat. Yeah, mashallah. And you've been doing it for 15 years, right? Yeah. Is this the 15th year? You see all the gray hair? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's all that. All exactly. that is because of the turkeys. Mm -hmm. right. um, I wanted to bring uh, Muneeb into this conversation. Muneeb, we're talking about building power through service. I know that ICNA Relief strives to uplift the underserved in the U.S. through um, a nationwide network of shelters, food pantries, health clinics, development programs for their, for their constituents, disaster relief, and refugee services, just to name a few. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about the work that you've seen ICNA Relief do within the Chicagoland area that you feel um, you know, helps build power for communities. Yeah, it's always so difficult talking about what Ignor Relief does because I could either give a quick laundry list or I could pick one and go really, really in depth. Yeah, but I actually have this little little <laughs> exactly, circle on screen yeah. to help you out. So as we can see, it's it's a lot it's a lot of work that Isna does uh, in terms of the Ikna does in terms of the services provided. Um, but yeah, so a lot of ways that they make an impact. Yeah, so you know, you were talking about how Ignor Relief brings power into it. It's always like, like Jihad said, it's always grassroots, you know, it's families coming together, it's communities coming together, and it's also a lot of collaboration. You know, we can say that ICNA Relief does all of this, but every part of that pie chart comes from so many other different groups that play into it. The food banks, the churches, the schools, and for Muslim family services, the counselors, the people that volunteer their time to be family mentors, the physicians that become our um, uh, volunteers at the free health clinic. So. When you talk about community, it's so many people putting in what they can to make this happen. Um, there's one thing that, that, that comes to mind, you know, I went to a church in the area that is providing like shelter and school for people seeking asylum. And this was my first couple of weeks at Ikner Relief. And then I saw this pastor come into our food pantry and he walked away with a big uh, portion of food. And I realized that a lot of the food to feed these people at this church comes from our food pantries. Mm. And so it's like that's where community is being built and people giving what they can, finding the need, and then, you know, supplementing that. Yeah, I really, um, I really spoke to me, Jihad, when you said this is an amana. This is a responsibility for our, for us as Muslims to give back to our communities and continue to build on the foundations that were laid by those before us and just continue to bring that 
goodness into all the work that we do for sure. Um, you're watching Muslims Collaborify live on Can TV 21 and CanTV.org slash hotline. Today's discussion is being thankful and building power through service. My guests are Jihad Shoshara and Munib Ansari. Give us a call and join the conversation. So we're going to talk about, we've been, oh, we have a caller. Um, good evening, caller. Did you have a question or comment? Hello. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Yeah, sorry. Uh, my name is Dina, and I have a question for you guys about um, uh, helping out the community and finding a resource. Because you know, when you leave college, you don't have the you know the groups, the MSAs, and the different college groups to get involved with the community. So I was wondering, is there a resource out there that has like a list of uh, opportunities? That's a great question. Um, I know Munib, you just got done with college, yeah. um, and Jihad, you have a you have a young man who just started college. Mm -hmm. Once folks are out of that college world, uh, how can they find out about helping out, whether with Ikna relief, whether with uh, with opportunities within our communities? What uh, what would you recommend? I always feel like you know if you can't find opportunities, just keep looking. But one place you should definitely start looking is uh, DuPage Chris and uh, DuPage's volunteer. Pool volunteer portal. So Giving DuPage is again one of our partners and they do this really good job of taking all the nonprofits from around the DuPage County area and putting them together in this one online portal and so you can scroll through a whole laundry list of volunteer opportunities and say okay I want to do manual labor on Saturday and you'll find places for that. And so that's actually how we've started allocating our volunteers mm -hmm. um, through the different partnerships that we formed through Giving DuPage. So Giving DuPage is a great place to start looking. And also DuPage Chris, which is like a, a search engine for nonprofits in the area. Obviously, it's selective to DuPage County. But, you know, I always say if you call somebody up, the worst thing that they can say is no and turn you away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're looking for something to do, just start making calls. I would say I don't, you know, I'm old enough to know that I remember a time before the internet and that we didn't have convenient lists and stuff like that. But, you know, the thing was is that I, you know, at, at the time the Muslim community was not as established with the organizations it has now. So I just, you know, going back to medical school, just started, you know, volunteering at clinics and mm -hmm. didn't have to be anything that was a, like a Muslim oriented thing. The thing is, what you find is that if you do this over and over, eventually people of goodwill, both outside the Muslim community and inside the Muslim community, find you. Yeah. Right? You know, my volunteering in Muslim clinics are one of the things that helped lead to my involvement with the Iman Clinic on the south side. Right. And, um, you know, right now with the Turkey Drive, for example, um, I'm going to say probably 20% of our donors are not Muslim. Yeah. yeah. So. And I think that's a great um, that's a great uh, point that both of you bring up. Look for the opportunity. I would also uh, recommend going to your local mosques. I know that at Islamic Foundation, um, our school put together a education um, back to school drive, which was uh, specific to uh, backpacks that we worked with Igna Relief on. And I know that the uh, you, Facebook, as well as websites uh, of the various organizations, whether it's Web Foundation, Sabil Pantry, uh, as well as Igna Relief would have some great opportunities for you. Um, so I just wanted to share with all of you a great video that we have about, um, ab about the turkey drive. So I'm just going to put that out there and then we'll continue our conversation with our guests. Uh, 520 turkeys, I believe, here. We unloaded 500 over at Till. Total of 5,000 today, God willing. And uh, uh, this is going good. You can see from my shoulder here.
that was amazing to see the joy on people's faces. I mean, we take this for granted. This is the this is the season of thankfulness, and it's actually a lot of us. I think whether Muslim or non-Muslim, we all love to celebrate uh, family. Just being thankful for the the blessings that we have, and um, I guess this this begs the question: What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? You know, you know, you're gonna have to answer this question at the dinner table. <laughs> Might as well just come up with an answer right now. So, what do you think, Muni? What are you thankful for? Uh, I'm really thankful that I'm healthy. Um, I, I wake up every day, nothing hurts, and I can I can go seize the day with as much energy. And uh, I'd like to think that I'll never get old. Okay, both of these keep people here that. can just keep thinking that. <laughs> Be, be be positive. I like it. How about you, Jihad? You know, I'm just grateful for all the blessings that I've received. I mean, it, it, I am a physician. I don't have to worry about having food in my refrigerator. You know, my kids get education. I can do a lot of opportunities for them, and, and I can help people. And that's just, you know, that's more than most people can do in the world. So I'm just very blessed to have those opportunities. Yeah. And that is um, exactly what I'm thankful for as well, for all the wonderful blessings that we have with families, with health, with just even something as simple as having a turkey, um, you know, at Thanksgiving dinner. So um, glad to hear. Oh, we have another caller. Uh, good evening, caller. Would you do you have a comment or question? Yeah, I actually have um, maybe a question. Uh, my name is Linda, and um, and by the way, thank you guys for everything that you're doing for the community and, and supporting, you know, non-Muslims and Muslims. Um, and I, this question is probably more or less, you know, there's a lot of mainstream um, Muslim children and teenagers or young adults that are out there that are, want to get involved and want to help. And when they go to these type of programs, they're received very well and embraced because, you know, they want them to be involved in the community. So what about the kids that are not your mainstream Muslim kids, the ones that maybe girls who don't wear scarves, they little, you know, they basically don't know a lot about their own religion, but when they, you know, they want to get, you know, be involved more, will they be received into this, you know, into the community and accepted and, and, feel like they can be a part of the community also because eventually that would help them feel some uh, connection to their own community even when they could be disconnected. Yeah. Thank you Linda for the question and before we answer what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Uh, I'm thankful for my family and all my friends. That's a great thing to be thankful for. So Jihad, um, what, what do you think of Linda's question? Well what I think is that you know Speaking just in terms of when people do like work for the underserved, what people ultimately care about, I'm not just talking about Muslims, everybody is helping people and getting work done. So if, um, you know, I don't think, you know, when people look at uh, somebody who is helping them in some fashion, they're not really caring about what they're wearing mm -hmm. or like, you know, whether what their obs what their status of observing faith is what they want to know is you know can you help me are you ma are you making a positive difference right and so I would encourage anybody to get involved regardless of what their whether their traditional or untraditional background mm -hmm. is because at the end of the day it's about helping people um, and that is an important part of our faith it's a key part of our faith um, so I would just say you know just push ahead with the work. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, um, uh, viewers, as you saw from that video, there were people of all sizes, ages, ethnicities helping out with the turkey drive. And I think the purpose there was to come together as a community and be thankful, but also give back to others in need. And as you saw the joys on, on young and old being excited about receiving a turkey and the hard work that goes into bringing that to fruition, I, I think that... Uh, you know, again, like Jihad said, show up Sh mm. keep and keep showing up because a part of this is you're there to serve and you're there to help. And I think, um, you know, as a community, we always look for the helpers for sure. So I want to bring, um, as we as we start to talk about thankfulness, um, you know, and we talked about what we're thankful for, I do want to talk about 
take a moment to look at the challenges our communities face. Um, you know, one of the key, uh, some of the statistics that we see um, online are uh, alarming. Um, you know, anti-Muslim assaults as well as bullying ha is at an all-time high. Uh, we've heard that, uh, you know, based on Pew Research, nearly a co quarter of U.S. Muslim adults view discrimination, racism, or prejudice as one of the most important face uh, problems facing uh, them as American Muslims today. Um, and even something to the effect of 78% of articles mentioning Muslims or Islam have a negative tone. Um, and that's basically talking a little bit about how the media covers and depicts Muslims in the news, um, and it's usually very negative. Um, you know, as folks that are working in, in the community, doing things uh, towards building community, building power for our communities as a whole, what are your thoughts on some of the, the actual uh, data that is out there? How do we combat this? How do we work on this? I like to think that the difference, you know, we have 75 different partners, and I think it would be silly to say that all of them have a uh, overwhelmingly favorable opinion of Muslims uh, throughout their entire congregation. But I always think that by doing this work, it's not just demonstrating our faith, it's demonstrating that we still have a shared goal. Mm -hmm. That where we stand together is a greater ground than where we stand apart. And it's on that shared ground that we're able to put our best foot forward. So I really feel that these statistics I think they're indicative of how much more work we have to do. You know, yeah, we have 75 partners. Make them more. Make them more and bring that number down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say that, um, again, it comes down to, to the work. And in particular, you know, there's always going to be, you know, something somewhere in the world where mm -hmm. someone can point to and say, oh, look at this or that, and it reflects negatively on Muslims. You know, what I tell people and this is true, is that, you know, the people at Emmett Till, when they think of the word jihad, okay, yeah. they don't, they're thinking of me and the guy who brings the turkeys to them. Right. So that's something that's been built over, with that school, 19 years of commitment and, and uh, you know, just conveying what is, we feel, the best part of our religion, right? Right. So um, I think it's, the, the long slog is what, it will eventually turn that tide. Mm -hmm. um, there's always going to be an opportunity for somebody to, you know, take out their personal problems on, on you know, uh, whatever they're discriminate they discriminate against. Right. But um, you know, this work in the long term is what inshallah is going to help change that. Um, and like you know, Mike Minib says, like make them more. I mean, God willing, we'll be able to expand this and move it forward. Yeah, and I think it's by our actions that we will be judged. So making sure that we're showing up and we're continuing the work for sure. Another important thing to keep in mind about building civic power and making sure that we're heard and seen is 2020. Um, this is a big year for our community. We have the census coming up and we have our election coming up. So here's another way that we can all come together to make a difference. Um, I do want to bring it back to the work that both of you do. Um, I wanted to ask, how can view viewers watching, we talked about volunteering as well as giving back to the community. How can uh, volunteers watching um, help ICNA Relief as well as the Muslim Turkey Drive? Could you speak to, to that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, there's no five-minute solution to uh, community building. Like Jihad said, you know, he's been putting at this for 19 years. Um, so it all comes from 80% of our work is done by volunteers. We don't receive government funding, so our funds come from the community. Um, and mentors come from the community. Like Volunteers come from the community. Connections come from the community. So I think it's time for people that want to help to reflect on what do I have that I can give. Um, and it would be silly that everyone says, well, I have nothing. I, I don't think that's true. I, I think that everyone has something to contribute from you know the 12-year-old up to the 80-year-old. Okay, wonderful. And here are some uh, easy ways that you can help. They have a food pantry on Saturdays. You can donate food. You can help with the administration of the programs, as well as any of your skill sets you can bring to uh, to the table, whether it's accounting, media, and as uh, Muneeb said, just being a part of the process and being a part of the community. Um, talking a little bit about uh, the Muslim Turkey Drive, there, there's a uh, 
There's a picture. I think this is from today. Yeah. Uh, folks uh, giving out turkeys. So the dry, the distribution of turkeys has started. But I know that we still need more turkeys. Yeah, we still need <coughs> to pay for more turkeys. Um, so basically, with respect to the you know, with uh, um, how the turkey drive runs, it's collecting funds from the community. Uh, we get a matching uh, dollar for dollar grant from the Islamic Food Nutrition Council of America, which we are extremely grateful for. That amazing organization. But at the end of the day, we still have to raise funds in the community. So you're going to the website and donating is the most immediate way people can help. Um, long term, if you know somebody wants to get involved, um, you know. Uh, it, we do take some volunteers on, on the days. Right now, we have that set uh, mm -hmm. for this year. But um, moving forward, um, you know, that's something that happens every year. And it's, as the turkey drive gets announced and publicized, um, we usually do put a call for turkey uh, volunteers as well. Wonderful. So the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition is a partnership of activists, influencers, and organizers. Our mission, as you know, is to collaborate and amplify the civic efforts towards a strong and equitable America and building civic power for our community. Um, we empower the voices of cultural and diverse Muslims. So I wanted to share with uh, you viewers uh, uh, some great events that are going on. You've heard about the Chicago Muslim Turkey Drive, uh, HCPS schools, 5,000 turkeys that's still ongoing www.sabilpantry.org. Um, Make sure that you check out the American Medina exhibit, which is at the Chicago History Museum. It was open to the public on October 21st, 2019, and continues. It's a wonderful way to learn about Muslims in Chicago. And finally, uh, make sure that you uh, learn all about um, the Inner City Muslim Action Network, a great partner in the Turkey Drive. Uh, um, they have a great dinner coming up on December the 14th. Uh, so make sure that you learn more about the wonderful work that they do as well. Uh, I wanted to thank you both, uh, Jihad Shoshara, Munib Ansari, for joining us tonight. Uh, we're so blessed to have you be a part of our community and continue to build power through service. Um, thank you again, uh, viewers, for watching Muslims Collaborify. I'm Rima Kamran for, with the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition. We have only scratched the surface of the many, many things we have to talk about. So we hope you'll join us again on Monday next week at 7.30 p.m. Our website, www.ilmuslimciviccoalition.org, has all the information uh, that you will need to learn about uh, the work that we do. Thank you again. Remember, collaborate, amplify, and build civic power. Have a great evening, and see you next week.